All right, everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I just wanted to do a quick video on how my Easy ABL kits are actually operating and how they work and a rough overview of how to get them working, okay? So this is going to be recorded in one take, so it might be a little rough, but I wanted to get something out there since I have a lot of people asking and I want to be able to show everybody how it works. So we're going to run through the basic steps that happens once you have the kit installed and the firmware loaded and configured. So the first thing you wanna do is actually physically get the sensor installed. And when you get the kits, now these are not finished. These have the boards attached and these get installed in a case. But this is the actual sensor module and this is an 18 millimeter sensor. And this will go in a mount that goes on the head on your printer. Now it is very important that you have the offsets set for the sensor in the firmware and what that means is let's say it's to the right of the printer by 20 millimeters in terms of in relation to the head you need to measure that on the x and y and if it's in front or left or right on the printer and that gets entered into the marlin firmware so once you have that done you have the firmware configured and uploaded you're ready to actually use the sensor so the calibration process with my sensors involves setting it a distance from the bed and then adjusting the set screw on the back of the sensor. What that's going to do is adjust the sensing distance and get you the most accurate reading possible. So now without going too into depth with this, I'm going to show you how it works on another printer. So I have a custom CR10 here and you can see it on the screen and I've got a Raspberry Pi hooked up to it to control it. So I've preheated the bed for this demonstration and I've got some PLA loaded in here. And what I'm going to do is, just to start this off, I'm going to emulate actually going through the process. So roughly, you're going to want to home everything. So I'm going to home X and Y, and then it's going to home Z. Now, when you home with the sensor on there, it homes in the direct center of the bed. It's not going to home with the head off to the left. And the reason it does this is because you want to have it in the center so it gets its baseline. And with these sensors, you want to probe in a little bit on the bed, not on the edge exactly. So I probe in 50 millimeters on my larger beds and 20 millimeters on my smaller beds because I've had them on the Tivo Tarantula. I have my, even on my start, which has a little 150 by 150 bed. Um, the important part is getting a good grid and making sure that sensors on the bed 100% and not like halfway off. It needs to probe all the way on the bed. So I have the sensor home, I have the bed heated, it's at my print temp, which is 60 Celsius. So what that's going to do is, it's going to make the ambient air temperature get to the standard print temperature, because these sensors can be thrown off by temperature fluctuations. And if you preheat the bed before you do any of this, it negates those effects. So anytime you're calibrating the sensor, you want to have your sensor homed and over the bed and let it get that heat from the bed to get up to the operating temperature. And then what I typically do with the Raspberry Pis is I add a command to home all the axes before it heats everything so it's there in the center of the bed during the heat up process. So once you have it all installed and configured and dialed in, which is all covered in the guide for the Easy ABL, what you can do is you can actually run through a bed leveling process. So for example, my start script has a G28 and then a G29. So I'm manually typing these commands in right now to the console. And what it's going to do is it's going to home XYZ and then it's going to run through the auto bed leveling routine. And on this particular printer, I have a 3x3 grid. So it's going to go through and probe a 3x3 grid. Uh, sorry if I'm talking a little weird here. I got a monitor in my ear and hearing myself is kind of throwing me off. Um, still new to all this video production stuff. I'm just using OBS and my live stream type setup to go ahead and produce this quickly for you guys. So it's going through, it's probing the bed. This particular printer has a three by three grid. So it's going to do three across, three in the middle and three in the back. And you can see here, it says it's processing. And once it's done, it's going to actually spit out a grid showing how off level the bed is. And that's the mesh it's going to use to level the bed. So then what I'm going to do while I just kind of talk about this here, I've got a 200 by 200 test cube loaded and that will show you what it does. So you can see here this particular bed. Now zero zero is the first point it probes. So which I believe uh, I wasn't paying attention. 
but it's the the front right so you can see the the front of the bed is a little bit higher and it kind of like slopes down like that but it's going to take care of that deviation in the bed now i just have pei on top of this this works with glass this works with build tack pei mirrors any sort of surface um the advantage with my sensors is that they actually work at detecting the glass they do not detect the metal underneath the bed some of the sensors that people recommend, like the inductive type, they'll actually detect the aluminum underneath the glass. So you're not actually leveling the surface that you're printing on, which kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run through the actual print routine here. And so I'm going to go ahead. You can see, so as soon as I hit home or print, it homes my axes and then it starts the heat up process. Now, because I preheated this just for the sake of the video, what it's going to do is it's going to actually just start printing. So you'll see it home again, and then it'll go through the auto bed leveling routine. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the auto scroll back on so you can see the terminal here. So it's check-in, it says E1 heating, and it's going to heat up the temp. So I print PLA on this at 230. You can ignore that little uh, snapshot. The camera module died on that printer. I haven't replaced it. So we're, our extruder is all heated. It's going to now go through the G28. And then you'll see it go through the G29 procedure again. Now, looking at the console, you're not going to see it spit out that grid that we saw earlier because it's doing a print. It only does that output when you manually issue a G29 without doing uh, a print. So if it detects that you're doing a print, it's not going to put it out there. So now it's going through the ABL routine. So you can see it probing the first point. It goes fast and then slow. And the reason it does that is that second probe it does at the slower speed is a little more accurate than the first. So it takes a little bit longer to probe the bed, but the accuracy is worth the added time. So this is gonna go through four more points after this one. And then my start script I'm using Simplify 3D to generate my G-code, but it's going to go to the corner. I'm trying to point like I can point on the screen. Um, it's going to go to the front left corner, uh, 20 millimeters on Y, and it's going to just extrude three millimeters of film here. And I realize I'm screwing up some words because, again, I'm hearing myself in my ear. I should have put more of a delay. So now it's going ahead and doing the skirt that I have on there. And you can see it's looking pretty level already. And this bed's not very level. This is just a sheet of PEI stuck to the standard CR10 bed. And the print temp, you can see the gaps in the, uh, the skirt there. It's because the print temp's a little high. I usually print with Maker Geeks PLA, and they have a print temp of 235. But this is just some cheaper stuff I got on Amazon. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit because otherwise what's going to happen is it's just going to keep bubbling because it's printing too high. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to actually move the camera closer. So obviously I'm not going to be able to talk to you, but I'll show you the lever, the layer it's getting. So I'm going to shrink this here and then you'll be able to see exactly how well this is working. So as you can see, the layer is very even. I'm able to actually start prints remotely more than 99% of the time, and it's going to automatically level and have no issues. Now, one thing I'm going to show you is what's called the baby stepping Z feature that's in the firmware that is included with my kits. What that's going to allow you to do 
is actually move your Z height in real time. So let's say you forgot to heat the bed or you screwed up the calibration process and it's slightly too high or slightly too low. What you can actually do is move your Z in real hot time. So, and this is a feature of Marlin, which is the firmware that I use with the kits and it's enabled in the firmware that I put out for the CR10s and any other future printers that it's supported. And I can show you how to enable that in your firmware. So I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna show you on the LCD how to use the baby stepping. So basically, let's say your layer is 0.2 too high. What you can do is adjust that while it's printing and just let it print. And then what I'll usually do is go back and adjust my Z offset to whatever I baby stepped it and then save that and I'm usually good to go. So check this out. So you may or may not have been able to see how well that actually worked, but you can see in the lower right hand corner where the filament didn't stick to the bed. So my Z offset set correctly on that printer. So when I moved it up 0.3, it actually moved up in real time and then I moved it back down to zero. So what you can do is use that as a feature to even more fine tune the ABL. That does not negate the auto bed leveling procedure that just adjusts the Z height. So you can use that to save a print if for some reason your probe was off for that print, which can happen. I mean, there's margins of errors with everything. I don't claim that the kits are perfect or my sensors or anything, but I have all the documentation and all these little tips and stuff in the guide to help you get the most out of your printer and the ABL kit. Now, 99% of the time, I don't have to adjust anything. I just hit print and the printer does everything. It levels it and prints. Um, I actually have a large 15 inch by 15 inch print going on my S4 that was started from work and it leveled and printed fine. It's been printing for over 20 hours and it's been working great. Here, I'll actually even pull it up here so you guys can see here. This print was actually started remotely. Now, ignore the stringing. This is a new brand of filament, and I'm going to end up just blasting it off with a heat gun. But that entire thing, which is an entire amount of support, is actually perfectly on the bed because of that ABL sensor and the compensation it offers. So that's all. I'm going to go ahead and upload this. Hopefully you guys like the video and this actually shows you how this works. If you have any questions, you can either reach me at support at th3dstudio.com or you can go on the Facebook page and look up th3d studio or just if you're, you know, friends with me or in the group, just send me a message. I'm Timothy Hoagland on Facebook. Um, there's another profile, Tim Hoagland. That's my backup one in case something happens to my main one. So don't message that one. I don't check it. <laughs> but anyways, thank you, everybody. I got to get some more kits packed up before I go out of town tomorrow. And I uh, just wanted to get this up here so I can actually demo the system showing it works. You know, instead of you guys just taking my word for it. But anyways, have a good night and have a good weekend. And thank you for watching.